We have traveled all over Kenya and East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey. And share their family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we're in the village of Kilinga, just below the slopes of Mount Meru in Arusha, Tanzania. For many people here, farming is a main activity and Michael is not being left behind. Meet Michael Lazaro, a hard-working young man who ditched the city life to come and work in the Shamba. It hasn't been easy, but Michael is now seeing the fruits of his labor. He has never looked back again. Michael, when did you start farming? I have been born in a farming family, as my father and mother were farmers. Personally, I started farming properly in 2007, and I'm still farming. Do you find farming profitable? Everything that I am is from farming. I have built a nice house. All the money came from my farm. I have bought other plots too, all because of farming. I have known people, very many people, mostly through agriculture. What message do you have for the youth? Farming pays. Those young men who are loitering in the cities, it's just a waste of time. There is nothing for them to do that is important there. Actually, most of the work that is uh, found in the cities requires expertise and knowledge, which most of these young men don't have. So my advice to them is to come back home. Farming pays. This four-acre shamba tucked away in the Kilinga village at the slopes of Mount Meru in Arusha, Tanzania, is run by that two-year-old Michael. He grows maize, potatoes, bananas, and also has cows and sheep, and is planning to restart his chicken business. Farming is often viewed as an old person's occupation, but Michael family believes it's an excellent job for young people too. But he needs our help. Here in Arusha, we have farmers' open days, farmers' shows, at least once every year. I usually visit and I meet different experts. They give various advice on various crops and sometimes there are also seminars and workshops at village level and sometimes even in the town and I participate. The heart of the Shamba lies on the soil. Good soils mean good crops. The first thing we need to do is a soil test. The soil care team come by to show Michael how to test the soil. To collect a good soil sample, dig a hole one foot deep in your shamba with a panga. Take out a handful of soil from the middle of the hole. Put the soil into a bag and take more samples from 20 different places around the farm where the crops are grown. This should be done in a zigzag pattern. Label the bag with your name, telephone number, size of farm, and what you want to grow. Then, take it to Soil Care's mobile lab. Team Moth has come to deliver the soil sample report and explain the results to Michael. Mr. Afula, you've gone through the soil report. Yes. So what recommendations would you have for Michael here? Yeah, Michael, your farm, in your farm you wanted to plant Irish potatoes and uh, your soil acidity is 5.1, which is adequate enough for growing Irish potatoes. Your soil fertility, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium levels, and other micronutrients, everything is adequate except for potassium. Therefore, we shall give you advice for potassium. Uh, Michael, do you use any fertilizer? No. 
you don't. You don't. Aha. Uh-huh. So what do you think about that? Yeah. For for his farm, he's going to apply of NPK 171717 in split application form. That means at planting, he will use 70 kilograms of that fertilizer, and at top dressing, again he'll use 70 kilograms of that fertilizer on his farm. On manure, right. you are supposed to make your compost manure. Ensure that it has decomposed well for a period of three months. Use of fresh manure will not support the growth of plants in your farm. Therefore, make your compost using plant residues and make it let it decompose for three months. Is that all? That's not all. Mm-hmm. Uh, other alternative crops that he can grow on his farm. Yeah, he made the right decision to choose on tubers. Therefore, any crop that is a tuber will grow well on this farm. For any other crop, we shall have to recommend again for kind of fertilizer application he will do for his soil. Uh, lastly, he must. continuously make compost for his farm ensure there are no weeds on his farm and uh, ensure that he uses certified seeds on his farm then he will have great harvest uh, on this land in the meantime we've asked Harrison Juma a feed expert from Unga to pass by and advise Michael on a new venture how to start up a successful broiler chicken business on his shamba michael could you could you please tell the expert when you started keeping chickens well, i started rearing chickens in 2004 and i started in arusha town i did it for about 2 years but i couldn't expand due to space and the plots had owners i started in a rental house i took one room for my living quarters and another where i kept the chickens well as life continued and uh, people started increasing some people started feeling that i was becoming a nuisance living with chickens in a residential area well the environment became a bit not conducive for me so i started thinking seriously of coming back home and doing this in a large scale well that is how i built this and it is my wish that at least i can have up to 1500 chickens <laughs> in the city <laughs> i was getting some income and since i had tested the money i decided to come home and even encourage others that poultry pays uh, well done michael well done Harrison you've heard from Michael 1500 chickens I, I think, what, what do you think of that is he ready enough for that um well done Michael um for the good work that you've done so far i think chicken farming and and more so broiler production is is quite a, <clears throat> a profitable enterprise if you do it correctly i've i've, I've seen your house and um for 1500 chickens um there will be i think too many for this facility um it's about 80 square meters and you target um, about 10 birds per square meter so it's actually enough for 800 birds and not 1500 you have um partitioned the house as well in the middle which i don't think it was necessary to do you when you partition the house it means either you have two attendants or you have two sets of clothes uh, two sets of gum boots in terms of you're going into one house you need um equipment for that house you're going into the other house you need equipment and clothing for that house that's an extra cost plus when you come to do your brooding it means that you will be you you will be forced to do two brooders uh, and that's an extra cost as well you could also actually do one brood on one side and after the brooding period you carry half the birds into the other side and that's stressing the birds as well which is something you can avoid by just uh, bringing down the partition so that you just have one one hole and you can be able to manage it uh, more easily and less uh, less costs now that we know what to change about the chicken house we also need to know how to control diseases to keep the profits up so at the entrance you need uh, what we call a food dip 
that will have a disinfectant. So each time you walk into the house, you need to disinfect. If you're carrying any bacteria or any pathogen, um, you leave them there so that you go into the house when you are clean. Um, you need clothing, a dust coat or an overall that you'll be using when you're inside the house. So anything that belongs to the house, even if it's bacteria or whatever, it stays inside there. When you're walking out, you just walk out as yourself. I think you've mentioned that you want to grow and do 10,000 birds at some point. So that means you'll have multiple houses. So multiple houses means that um, from each house, each house has to be independent in terms of um, cleanliness and, and, and biosecurity. What's the first thing you should do when the chicks come? You have to get wood shavings on the floor. The purpose of the wood shavings is that so that your chicks do not get direct contact with the floor. Uh, the floor gets very cold and it affects the bird. You're looking at between three and four inches of wood shavings. Anything less than that, um, as much as some farmers think it's a cost shaving, you'll actually end up spending a lot more money on wood shavings if you put less than the three inches because you'll have to add it at some time because you get all the wood shavings um, getting wet. So you have to remove it out and bring it fresh. And if you put less again, you have to do it like maybe three times before uh, you, you, you harvest your birds. So you need to get it correct the first time. It's important that you, whatever you bring into the house is clean and it is basically sterile. So the wood shavings that uh, we've talked about, they need to be sprayed, they need to be disinfected before you bring them into the house because you bring them from different areas and chances are that they could be contaminated with bacteria and things. So you need to spray them. Um, after you have your wood shavings, you need to prepare your brooder. The brooder is a very specific area that your chicks will arrive at and you need to take care of them more specifically uh, as far as temperatures are concerned. Okay, So you need to heat your house before the birds arrive. So when the brooder is ready, you have temperature is at where it's supposed to be, you need now uh, to put in drinkers, sources of water, and feeders, source of feed, okay? So when they come, they are coming into a brooder that is ready and they can be able to eat and drink. Now, um, there are different types of feed. If you're looking at broiler, you would do a broiler starter and a broiler finisher. Start broiler chicks on broiler starter crumbs and feed the chicks as much as they can eat. Make sure there's always food and fresh water in the brooder. You can move the chicks into the finisher crumbs or mash after three weeks and then move them out of the brooder. Michael was telling us that he was particularly anxious about his maize crop. So, having tested his soil and advised on fertilizer, we invited a crop improvement officer from the Ministry of Agriculture to show him some new improvements in maize growing. How much maize are you expecting to, to harvest from this portion? Really, it depends on uh, climatic conditions. Sometimes I get 15 bags, sometimes 17 bags, sometimes as low as even 10 bags, depending on the climate. Is that good? Just to leave your own. Mm. From Michael. what I've seen, Michael can get a lot of maize if he uses modern farming techniques. He could have harvested more than he has harvested right now. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at his maize, what problems do you see? It looks like Michael has not used any fertilizers, which is important to plant's growth. Evidently, he hasn't used any fertilizers because if he had used any, the growth would have been uniform. As you can see here, there are short ones and tall ones. Michael, how much fertilizer did you use? I didn't use any fertilizer. I planted during the long rains. What about the spacing? On the other side of spacing, he got it all wrong. He has tried though, but he's not there yet. Mm -hmm. The recommended spacing to use is 25 centimeters from plant to plant and 75 centimeters from row to row. So looking at Michael's crop, 
What diseases have you seen? The only disease here is a new one. It is the maize lethal necrosis disease. Uh -huh. And the signs are stunted growth in maize and leaves withering. But here in Michael's farm, I haven't seen any signs yet. Michael's maize is healthy. And now he knows how to improve his crop next time he plants. His chicken business has had some good tips. So now it's time for a short rest before we tackle his potatoes. Coming up. Welcome back to Chamber Shape Up. We are still in Kilinga Village, Meru District, Tanzania. Where we are shaping up Michael's Shamba. There's so much to be done, so let's get on with it. We've advised him on his chickens and shown him how his maize crop could be bigger and better. But there's still more important lessons for Michael to learn. Michael's potatoes are not looking good. So we invited Eliud, a top seed officer from the Ministry of Agriculture, to drop by. Michael, you've been planting potatoes. How big is a shamba? One acre. And how was your last harvest? From that farm, I got 40 bags. Is that what you expected? No. I expected 70 to 80 bags. So you're not happy with the results? I was not satisfied. Uh -huh. You've heard from Michael. What can he do to improve his crop? For you to get a good harvest of good Irish potatoes, the first thing is to prepare the land properly. Remove all the grass. Remove all the weeds from your farm. These weeds are very dangerous. They take all the nutrients needed by the potatoes. So it is good to remove all the weeds. Also, dig your plot very well to a fine tilt. Go deeper, about 20 to 30 centimeters. This helps the soil to be fine and water can penetrate well. It also helps with aerating the soil. This will make sure that your potatoes are well rooted. So farm preparation is a very important step in potato planting. Also, get good seeds, preferably certified seeds. Then, get good planting fertilizer. When planting, observe good spacing. On potatoes, a farmer should space them well. 90 centimeters between the rows and 45 centimeters from one plant to another. The most important is fertilizer for potatoes. We recommend NPK 171717, which is nitrogen 17%. Phosphate 17% and potassium 17%. Potatoes require a lot of minerals and fertilizer. And potassium is important for big sized potatoes. Potatoes are attacked a lot and suffer from potato blight. If a farmer hesitates using the recommended pesticides to prevent and to treat his potatoes, his crops will be affected and he can lose up to 100%. Well, I think now it's good if we go and demonstrate to Michael practically and show him how he can improve his potato crop. Let's follow Eliud's instructions on how to plant potatoes to get the best results. When choosing the seed potatoes, Use only the ones which are clean and well sprouted without any disease. Make ridges two and a half feet apart. Make a trench in the ridge. Then spread manure on the trench. Make a hole every one foot and add one bottle cupful, which is 10 grams of fertilizer. Mix the fertilizer with the soil. Plant one seed in each hole, then cover with soil.
plant in this way as instructed by Eliud, and you'll be surprised and pleased with the results. Shamba Shepa. Another area where Michael needs help is in harvesting his maize. He is losing a lot of maize after he harvests. We asked Elliot to give him some advice before he left. Michael, when you harvest uh, maize, where do you store it? Once I've harvested my maize from the farm, I bring it here to dry. Once it is dry, I thrash it or shell it. And after shelling, I put it in sacks. My store is out here. I just put some logs on the ground and arrange my sacks on it and cover, just as you can see. Is that the correct way of storing maize? That is not a very good way of storage. Storage is a very important step for our farmers. And if a farmer doesn't store their maize well, even if it's a sack, it can be destroyed. And as you can see here, there are pests already and they will hatch and give rise to weevils and grain borers that will attack the maize. So storage is very important and we advise farmers to keep their harvest safe and in a proper manner. There are two ways of securing your maize. One is using drums or plastic containers. Storage of maize starts at the farm. We advise farmers to store maize only after being sure it is well dried at the farm. There he can cut his maize and stack them in heaps for them to dry properly. And one sign that the maize is well dried is take a grain and bite it. If it's hard, then it is dry. At that stage, a farmer can now choose to move the maize to his compound. Or even at the farm, he can still remove the husks. Once he finishes that, he will need to shell it. And there are two ways. One is by tractor-driven machines. The other one is by putting it in sacks and hitting it with logs or club. After shelling, he needs to winnow. If you look at the maize, it has husks, cobs, and other unwanted materials. So winnowing properly is required after that. He can then sieve the maize. Clean maize can now be stored using plastic containers or drums or put in sacks, but he will need to use pesticides for protection. Another very good way to store your maize is to use a pix bag. A pix bag is a maize storage bag with three layers of sack. To store your maize in a pix bag, hold the bag upright and fold over each layer of the bag to leave an edge. Fill in the inner bag with maize and shake until the maize is tightly packed. Then, tie the top of the bag in a knot. Then, tie the second bag around the top of the first bag. After that, tie the outer sack at the top. This will stop pests getting to your maize and destroying it. And you can store your maize for longer. It is so good to see a young man doing so well at farming. And we are so happy we could give him some good advice to get him to the next level in his chickens, potatoes and maize business. Michael, we've come to the end of our show. So what do you have to say? I am grateful to Shamba Shepa. You have shown me how to do many things on how to improve my farming using technology. And I promise, since you have taught me how to plant my potatoes, how to plant maize, the type of fertilizers, and how to store my food, I promise you, if you come in another season, you will see how I have put to use this knowledge you've given me. Thank you. Wow, that's great, Michael. We shall return <laughs> and see how far you are getting on. It's been another great show from Arusha, Tanzania, and we will see you next time right here on Shamba Ship. Shamba Ship Up is online. To learn more about today's topics, or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com, select the episode, and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up. 
to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shepa.